Mm -hmm. And what really carries it along is this magnificent music. So unlike anything else of Mozart's, these chromatic turns and this use of, of solo instruments, the clarinet and the, the basset horn, mm -hmm. and they're just so beautiful. And then the unusual sort of writing for that magic voice, that Fjordeligi type voice that goes way high and way low yes. and using those deep plunges of octaves to accomplish this. So it's, it's one that's been a great pleasure to do. There's not been one corner of it that you have, one hasn't looked forward to in rehearsal. So it's been fun. When I always love opening in a matinee, I think you always get a happy public in the matinee. That's true. Yeah, it was a very a good, good one. very good audience. You know, and we've, and uh, we've loved working together. Wonderful ensemble. I think the singers all played off each other very, very nicely. Well, it was great to work with Donald. I'd never worked with him, Donald Runnicles, before. And he is totally devoted to Mozart. Mm -hmm. And I hear everybody else, that every other composer. He also, I think, loves singers. And that is sort of number one requirement for conductors that work with <laughs> singers is you have yeah. to love them. Absolutely. And you have to understand them. And he has great understanding and great ideas and enormous enthusiasm. Well, you know, I find it hard to believe that this is not a very popular Mozart opera. It's not in, in the repertory in the way that the big four are, Don Giovanni, The Marriage of Figaro, Magic Flute, and uh, Così Fan Tutti. It was composed in 1791. It was tremendously popular for several decades and then vanished. Mm -hmm. It was rediscovered in the late 60s and then by the 80s was being periodically performed by, by major opera houses. But it still hasn't really caught on around the country. It's, I think it's been more popular in Europe. Yeah. It's hard to say. I mean, it, it has its problems like a domineo does. Of It's static a certain extent, it can be thought to be static. You're fighting that battle, whereas mm -hmm. Cozy, there's so much going on in Marriage of Figaro, you know, doors opening, windows. And they're more human dramas. This is an exceedingly human drama. And how we were encouraged by Albert, our, our director, to think of it is as sort of a great drama of passion. It's also, the, the big arias take the forms of concert arias a little bit, and they're often beautifully extracted from the opera, which doesn't necessarily happen that successfully in every other opera. And it is it is a story of, of great passion, but it doesn't have as much of the kind of visual interest. It's hard. You're, you're fighting a battle to make it move. And a lot of the recits were not written by Mozart. Mm -hmm. And San Francisco Opera has been brilliant in the way they've cut them and move them around to make sense and not have them go on. Because Mozart's recits had a great rhythm and beauty to them, and some of these don't. But it is it is beautiful, and it's very touching. They're absolutely magically touching moments, and some very real ones. I haven't done Sesto a lot, and I remember thinking that what you're, what I'm battling in doing the role is him being kind of a manipulated, yes. weak character. You're fighting to that constant anguish, the anguish of betrayal. But it's, it's a very interesting concept, just even in today's world. Do you think part of the problem, too, is the, uh, the nature of the opera? You mentioned the static quality. It's, it's really classified as opera seria, which was a form very popular throughout the 18th mm -hmm. century, particularly in the Baroque era. And it's usually characterized by serious subject matter, usually pertaining to religion, myth, or history. In this case, the character of Titus is based on a real emperor. And the character you play, Sesto, Sextus in Latin, is uh, a good friend of Tito's and is torn between conflicting loyalties. His yeah. friendship and loyalty toward Tito and his love for Vitellia who talks him into assassinating Tito. This is the basic core and the dilemma. But the, the opera itself, uh, the nature of the opera, it's, it's serious, but there's always a happy ending, which is interesting. Yes. It's not like solemn yes, grand more. opera. Yes. Yeah, even a domain. And the themes too. are yeah. usually concerned yeah. with love, intrigue, and honor. They're very heroic themes, and the poetry is elegant, and the music exquisite. 
Do you think it's perhaps too aristocratic for a lot of contemporary audiences? Oh, no. I mean, I think the public love <laughs> aristocratic <laughs> themes, and I think that is a very good word for it. It is an aristocratic dilemma. Mm -hmm. And the music is, I really think the shining star of Clemence de Tito is the music. It's so yes. unusual. And the two chorus pieces are just absolutely beautiful. And it's some of the most interesting recitative accompagnata. And that's where it, it is a jewel. And it, it's just different. It is a opera seria, and Mozart followed the opera seria rules. I think maybe people are more frightened of that. They see that and they think, oh my gosh, you know, we're going to be sitting there. But once you hear those, right in the beginning even, the way he, it begins, you know, here we are. Here's his situation immediately. And it's terribly interesting for that. I mean, I find that the, the chromatic, some of the lines that he's used, I, I don't hear anywhere else in Mozart practically. And yeah. when the, the, the texture is... is so transparent. It's a staggeringly beautiful opera. It really is. Yeah. The, the music is incredible, yeah. it, and it's very moving. The story, it's a very compact opera, mm -hmm. too. I was struck by its compactness, and, and the action really moves very quickly. Yeah. It's extremely well organized. Yeah. I think it's very hard to tell the reason why operas are done or not. You know, look at the Met 25 years ago. Mignon was mm -hmm. standard fare. Mino was in everybody's repertoire. And it, they, things just go in different cycles, for whatever reasons. Bel Canto sort of slips in and out of popularity. I'm thrilled that it's back in <laughs> Puritani here. I love Puritani. And it just happens for, I think, combinations of reasons. Mm -hmm. And Clemenza falls into that a little bit. We should perhaps mention here that this is uh, not the first time you've sung Sesto in San Francisco. Back in 1971, oh my I know. the San Francisco Opera put it on as one of their spring opera theater productions with the singers in contemporary evening dress performing the arias and actors in period costumes delivering the recitatives. We did it. It was m my debut at the spring opera, and we were in the current theater in this incredible production that I remember the orchestra I think were behind us and we watched televisions to see um, it was Gusty Meyer was the conductor and Gwen and I Gwen Jones and I were sent off to she was singing Anio, Anio tuxedo rental shop to get our costumes <laughs> and it was such a funny experience and I can remember Mr. Adler not liking our cufflinks <laughs> you know how he oversaw everything and it was it was lots of fun. And we did it in English too, I think. Yes, it was an English it version. It was English, yeah. And it's actually been more than a decade since you sung the role of Sesto. Yes, it has. The the only other production I ever did of it was in Teatro Colón in Buenos Aires, and that was a Roman production. Mm -hmm. We were in togas, togas, <laughs> versions of togas, and it was terrific. Actually, I remember thousands of steps. I mean, it was really on the forum and worked very, very well. And the other most beautiful production I've seen of it was at the Felsenreichschule in Salzburg when Ponell did it, mm -hmm. also in very much in, in Roman, but stylized Roman. And it was fantastic, just beautiful. And that's my only familiarity. So for me, it's, it's a bit of a learning game, mm -hmm. too, you know, to find my way through it and try and make, make it a little more defined than just in anguish. And in this production, again, it's not modern dress, but it's not set in Roman times either. It's no. in the 18th century costume, not the fancy dress 18th no, it's century, sort of, but it's you know, Ben Franklin. More, yes, yes, Ben Franklin, yeah. Age of Reason costuming, yes. which I think works very well in the production because the, the story really is timeless. We're dealing here with emotions that are really very modern. Yes, exactly. It is, I mean, it is one of the most passionate operas. It's about... La Passione, <laughs> <laughs> in every way, you know, and it's terribly dramatic for that reason. And the role of Sesto is actually quite complex. I'd be interested in your thoughts on comparing the role of Sesto with your other Mozart roles, notably Carabino in The Marriage of Figaro and Dorabella in Così Fantuti, which I understand you'll be singing again soon. Yes. Um, it is very different. I mean, Sesto is not 
essentially lighthearted. <laughs> He's a serious person. At the same time, when you think of situations that might clarify something, Sesto is fascinated and bedeviled by this character Vitalia, mm -hmm. as in other operas where this has happened. It, for example, Rossini's Othello. You begin with an angry duet, so to speak, or one of triumph, but you, you don't necessarily see their passion first in a lyrical way. Mozart, to a certain extent, plunges right in with the drama of it. And sometimes I think that when you see the lyrical aspect, the lyrical aspect of passion in a duet, first you have a slightly greater understanding of why this character is so totally captivated by this powerful woman. And that might further clarify it. They're already in an exceedingly complicated and somewhat angry relationship, mm -hmm. yes. but passionate. And the tendency to fight, for me to fight in the character of Sesto, is that he is manipula manipulated, that you have to make clear how devastated he is by this woman in order to do what she says when it's against everything yes. that's the fabric of his character. And his character is one of nobility and aristocracy and loyalty and kindness. And what makes people abandon that? And if, if it's usually passion or power, he is not power bound at all. No, it's strictly love that motivates yeah. him. And I think you make him totally believable. His dilemma and his final decision that, yeah. yes, he will try to assassinate Tito, even though, as you say, it goes totally against his brain, yeah. and his love for Tito. Yeah. And that's what the, the sort of button is that I find I'm constantly looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, too, that Sesto is a very multidimensional character. He's much more so, I think, than Carabino and oh, Dorabella, yes. who are delightful and certainly have lovely music to sing, but they're one-dimensional. Oh, and you can't take... I mean, Carabino you can take seriously because he does represent very clearly youth, you know, young adulthood or adolescence so clearly and with the lightning shifts of mood and intent. Dorabella is, if you take it too seriously, it just doesn't work. She's just silly, and it's funny. And in its silliness and funniness, it has a more serious overtone. And you have to respect that, but not exploit it, I think. I mean, I, I should talk. I haven't done it in <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> but what also, I think, helps with Sesto is to try and find the light times there is that wonderful duet with Anio that is one of friendship and goodwill. And if you emphasize that, you get some idea that he isn't just a weakling and, and manipulated by this woman, that he has some stature on his own. Mm -hmm. And it gives more meaning then to his demise and why it is really preferable to him that he be head chopped off or whatever they do. <laughs> yes. You know. Well, they were going to throw him to the lions, yes. apparently. Yeah. I, you know, and, and he feels that, that that would be a greater solace than even clemency. Yes. See, clemency in the end is not really suitable to him. It's the type of period on the sentence that is not necessarily going to be the most successful for him. Yes, and I think the audience, though, is relieved at that outcome oh, because yeah. he's likable. And I think the way you play him, too, we're rooting for Sesto. We don't want him to be thrown to the lions, lions or yes. whatever yeah. because he is so believable and we can understand why he acts as he does. But with Rome, Rome burned to the <laughs> ground, I think you'd have to ask a few people in the, you know, been through this nightmare of all these California fires. I know. Hard to forgive. <clears throat> yeah, you know? That, that, that part that's, <laughs> is that's particularly apropos in yes. this world of today. And, and it was interesting um, talking to some friends the other day of why one would ever do that. I mean, not incesto, but why arson exists or why these terrible things exist of, of people just doing it out of a deep-rooted spite or whatever. We're going to be playing at the end of the program the aria from the first act, Parto Parto, I Go, I Go. This is when Sesto agrees to Vitellia's request that he assassinate 
Tito, could you talk a little bit about that aria? Well, it's a famous aria, very often taken out of the opera because it has this fantastic clarinet duet, really, with the voice. Mm -hmm. And it is a very interesting, very clearly defined and constructed aria with three definite sections of increasing passion. It's, yes, I will go, yes, I will go. I mean, and he takes at least seven minutes <laughs> to go. <laughs> yes. um, but it's, it covers really the range of emotions of self-conviction that I'm going to actually do this. I'm determined to do it. I'm devoted to doing it. And I'll do it for one reason only, just to have you look at me, mm -hmm. you know, if that's it. And it seems to me that every time I turn on the television, this is what I see at the, on the soaps or in the sitcoms at night, is the unbelievable power of passion. So it is an increasingly enthusiastic aura of passion with a very difficult passage at the end where the, the voice and the clarinet are in, in thirds doing these triplet runs. And, and it's a wonderful aria, and I've done it a hundred times with orchestra, and it's it comes out of the opera mm -hmm. very, very well. That clarinet accompaniment is wonderful. And Philip and Fath is, you yeah. know, the king of clarinets. <laughs> Beautifully played. <laughs> He's just played. wonderful. You know. Anio is a very good uh, trouser role, too, for mezzo. Have you ever sung the role of Anio? I did. I recorded Anio with Colin Davis and Janet Baker. And Sesto was sung by Yvonne Minton mm -hmm. years ago, but I never have performed it. It's beautiful, and... I'm a big fan of Susan Graham's. I think it's one of the oh, lov wonderful. loveliest voices and loveliest, most rounded artist to come along. And, and all, all the singing, I think, was absolutely yeah, beautiful. Yeah, she's exquisite. I suspect that this is one of the problems with staging Tito, finding the voices with that kind of clarity, purity, and precision that Mozart requires, especially in this opera. Yes, and having a tenor that can mm -hmm. manipulate the coloratura of the last aria, which is... A very difficult aria. It is. Yeah. Beautiful music. Yeah, it? it is. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's so good to sing Mozart, too. Oh, I hadn't I know. sung Mozart in a couple of years because I hadn't, well, two years anyway, been doing Cherubinos, and it just feels so good. I just, you know, I melt when I hear it and <laughs> forget how healthy it is for the voice and healthy it is for your brain. I think a lot of singers say that Mozart is the best voice teacher. Well, it is. You, you have to be aware of so many things of rhythm and pitch and, and meaning and intensity, and it really calls it all into play. You mentioned some months ago that you've relinquished the role of Carabino. Do yes. you think Sesto now might replace him as your major well, trouser it'd be, role? Well, it would be nice. <laughs> I'd love to keep a Mozart connection going yes, any way I can. <laughs> I enjoy every minute of it. In the time we have left, Flick, I'd like to go forward a little bit as to what you have coming up. You're doing a number of recitals and some more opera. Yes, I am. Um, the next opera after here is Rosencavalier in Los Angeles. Ah, oh, wonderful. And of course, uh, we enjoyed your Rosencavalier here singing Octavian you. this uh, summer at the Strauss Festival. Thank you. And then the, the, the most exciting thing is this new production that... Lotfi has commissioned, the San Francisco mm -hmm. Opera's commission of Dangerous Liaison, written by Conrad. It's Conrad Souza. You mentioned that in the last program we did at KPFA back in February. Yes. Is, is that uh, completed now? It's not quite completed, but it's just beautiful, and mm -hmm. it's a beautiful libretto. And again, the Dangerous Liaison will premiere here next fall, next it's season. It's in the fall. I think it's, um, if not the opening, it's close to the opening. And person will be nice to wear a dress <laughs> <laughs> and be m evil and mean. And I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be great fun. Well, that'll give you some dramatic fireworks probably, too. I think so. <laughs> it's great fun. And that's what's been so much fun of working with Albert, who is very much a theater director mm -hmm. and has added a lot of that for us and helped us along that path. Do you have any new recordings coming up? What is just out is On the Town, which we did last year. They haven't finished recording these arias and barcaroles of Bernstein. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting piece of Lenny's. Mm -hmm. And then I did a French recording of all French songs of Marty Katz. 
Uh-huh. We did our long old, these CDs are it's a lot of music. <laughs> yes. So that's coming out at some point. You keep busy. I keep busy. Well, I certainly appreciate your taking time out in your busy schedule to talk about Sesto and La Clemenza di Tito. Flicka, thanks. It's been a thanks, wonderful Marilyn. talking with you again. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.